This spirit gets its name from a small town in the southwest of France, Cognac. In the 18th century, Cognac was called burned wine and remained one family's passion for 250 years. Join me as I visit the famed Chateau Bagnonet to learn about the Hennessy family's long and rich legacy. We'll also discover how Cognac gets its unique color and flavor characteristic. I'll meet up with executive chef David, who'll cook up some fantastic favorites like roasted breast of pigeon with foie gras and smoked filet of sturgeon picked fresh from a local fishery. I also show you how to make a paupiette de truite followed by a chocolate sabayon with cognac. You can bet our meal prepared today is a taste of history. On the banks of the beautiful River Charonne is this gorgeous Chateau Bagnonet. Let's go inside and meet eighth generation Maurice Hennessy. The spirit of cognac finds its roots in the southwest of France, where the bucolic town of its name has been distilling this variety of brandy since the 1600s. Hennessy's unique history dates back 250 years when a retired Irish brigade officer of the French Army, Richard Hennessy, established his own business exporting French brandies. Richard Hennessy had known this area rather well because his regiment was based not far from here on the sea. He knew the light, he knew the climate, he knew the beauty of the region. So he must have been a visionary. Obviously he knew cognac was a great opportunity for the whole world. 250 years later, we're still there. <laughs> Richard Hennessy wrote in his testament for his children that all the papers, all the letters should be kept so that the descendants of the descendants could know the story of the firm. This book dates from 1794, and this letter was written to Mr. Trumbull. Mr. Trumbull was a diplomat um, representing America and Europe, and he was also a wine merchant, but he was more interested in the cognac. And Mr. Trumbull is famous for having painted the Declaration of Independence on the Capitol in D.C. John Trumbull became one of the first importers of Hennessy following its arrival in America in 1794. Eight generations of Hennessy's, over 250 years, have continued to define cognac with savoir faire, craftsmanship, and innovation. To circumvent prohibition, Hennessy used a unique approach. It was impossible to sell a cognac. Underground you could, but not. Yeah, but that we were not in this yeah. business. <laughs> we were, for several years, the only spirit allowed legally in the US, and you could buy us in pharmacies under doctor's prescription. Amazing. The bold vision of Richard Hennessy and his ancestors has helped Maison Hennessy perpetuate the largest and most diverse cognac reserve in the world. There's something to be said when you walk into your cellar and you see 1800, 1830, 200 years back and you say to yourself, I don't know if I'm going to be around tasting this. No, you are not going to be around, but you know when you plant trees, it's the same. It's for the future. You know how much I love Morgans. In the heart of Cognac is this beautiful Morgan, which dates back before the Eiffel Tower. I meet the Chef David from Hennessy. Oh, Walter. Bonjour, Chef. Bonjour. Ça va? Ça va très bien. Qu'est-ce qu'on va faire aujourd'hui? On va acheter un, un peu les légumes là, pour faire le poisson et préparer le pigeon aussi. Donc là, Chef, on va prendre du chou vert et on va le blanchir et on va s'en servir pour recouvrir le pigeon. Beautiful. That's a gorgeous Savoy cabbage, which I use many times. It's actually one of Thomas Jefferson's favorite. We're going to also take an artichoke or two because artichokes like that 
I barely ever get to see. Those are beautiful. Look at the size of those. Chef, des magnifiques cœur de bœuf, belle couleur, bien fait. Those are unbelievable tomatoes. Translation, heart of the beef. They're actually heirloom tomatoes. They grow all over the southwest of France. Il y a une magnifique pomme de terre d'Île de Ré, spécialité de la France. We call them in the States new potatoes or call them Malta potatoes. We're going to use them to complement our menu today. So it's beautiful. Chef, what a beautiful market you guys have. Now, what's unique about this first dish is that it's a very old recipe that's been around for hundreds of years here, cooked in cognac. Tell me how you make this pigeon. Donc là, on utilise un pigeon de la région. C'est un pigeon. So the chef looks for the local pigeon, also called quail, that is here from the region, that has a lot of flavor because it eats of special grains and it's just a one of a kind poultry. He bones the quail, takes off the breast, and takes off the leg. He marinates it with a very special seasoning and a cognac. He sautés the quail breast, medium rare, sets it aside. Then he takes the foie gras, which is again from the region, and little pepper on top, sears it really, really hot. Pour accompagner, on va enrouler une feuille de chou. Then he takes Savoy cabbage and blanches it, but blanches it really, really, really al dente. He takes the quail breast, truffle, and the foie gras, and he makes a Napoleon out of the whole thing. If you would make that at home, this recipe, you can just take it and cook it in a very slow process, in a, like in a chicken stock, until it's done. It'll take you about 20 minutes. Donc là, on va avoir un jus assez so you have some gush mouse there that he puts in, like we cook in the century. He sautés the bones. He makes a little bit of a mûrebois, a little bit of celery, a little bit of onion, a couple of mushrooms. Puts it all in there. He glazes it with cognac. Adds in some red wine, reduces it down, and later he has a little veal stock set aside that he puts in it, let the sauce reduce. Une pomme de terre d'Ile de Ré. He serves a few little potatoes on the side and any melange of mushrooms. And he garnishes the whole dish with a slice of truffle. And this is just a spectacular dish that represents the region of Cognac. The location of the Strout and Sturgeon fish farm is ideal. Eh bien, ici, c'est un élevage de truites et de sturgeon. He bought the fish farm with the idea of delivering live trout. And then he got into sturgeon. He has thousands of fish in here, and he raises them until he can sell them. Qui en plus peut être and the beauty of it is, caviar comes from sturgeon, which is the ultimate goal for him eventually to get into the caviar business. Like most chefs, we really like sturgeon. Why? It's so fatty, has a beautiful texture, and it adapts itself to many, many great recipes. And for me, and a taste of history, I surely appreciate it because George Washington served sturgeon at least once a week. That's a first for me, that I get to hold a live sturgeon in my hand. <laughs> and we're going to go back to the chateau to prepare a spectacular dish, one of a kind. Chef, I know you have a special recipe for the sturgeon. The sturgeon, qui est intéressant pour travailler avec le cognac. The fish is perfect to work with cognac because it's naturally fat. Well, he wants to maintain the flavors of the region, so he works with natural flavors. It's an emulsion. So he's taking the cream, so basically it creates the foam effect. The last moment, then he takes a little horseradish, a small spoon of horseradish, and blends it under the emulsion. And this gives this unique flavor that he's looking for. Pour finir sur ce plat, on amène le salsifis frit. Taking the salsifis, peel it very fine, cook it up to a crisp, put it on top of the fish for some unique flavors. This menu, prepared by Chef David, was planned in combination with Hennessy XO where the cognac is carefully paired to match the flavor characteristics of each dish. Just a beautiful display of culinary architecture. Now let's find out more about cognac. Since its beginning in the 16th century, 
the process of producing cognac hasn't varied. The Cognac de Limited region of France holds the perfect growing environment to produce this spirit. We have a combination between the climate, which is very much under the influence of the Atlantic Ocean, and the soil. And the soil is chalky, limestone, clay as well. Many people do not realize that cognac starts off with a white grape. The grape varietal is in fact Uni Blanc. The Cognac de Limited region is the largest white wine production in the world. We need the volume because on the Cognac process, you have a reduction and concentration. At maturity, the fruit achieves the right balance of acidity and yeast, perfect for distillation. This is where we distill the most beautiful Eau de Ville. Once the wine has been pressed and fermented for two to three weeks, the process of double distillation produces eau de vie, French for water of life. When we distill nine liters of wine, we get just only one liter of a spirit, which is at 140 proof. It's white. That's right. It's very clear, like spring water, but when you smell, you get uh, floral and fruity notes. That is poured back a lot of flavor. The Eau de Vie matures in handcrafted French oak wood barrels until the aging process is complete. When ready, it is transferred to glass containers called demijohns, where some varieties are conserved for hundreds of years. Our founder cellar was built in 1774. Generation by generation put aside Eau de Vies and Cognac to make this most beautiful collection that we have. Absolutely spectacular. Two years before the American Revolution, this cellar has been here. This is a truly a step back in history. The oldest that we have is an 1800, which is totally unique. Each Eau de Vie has its own distinct flavor characteristics, often referred to as notes. Imagine you've got an amazing violinist, and you also have this great pianist. If you've got the right conductor that can make them play together, the symphony, the result, will be much more interesting than listening to one or the other. This is the exact same philosophy that we've got about blending. Hennessy's tasting committee is responsible for selecting which cognacs will be mixed together in order to achieve the perfect balance of taste, aroma, and body. We control perfectly the quality of the barrel. We control perfectly the quality of the Eau de Vie. Our role is to try to use each Eau de Vie when it is at its best. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I taste some tropical infusion in there. Yes, it's a beauty of cognac. A complexity and evolution of the flavor has been happening, and you still have freshness, but pure elegance with great maturity. Absolutely. The dish I'm making today is a collaboration between Chef David from Cognac and me. Trout itself doesn't have a lot of strength because it's a very delicate fish. So the fish bones, this happens to be some beautiful snapper, it will allow me to make a straightforward, beautiful flavor. Fish stack, we call it fumé, the poisson. So the rainbow trout, the same trout that we saw at the Moulin Fish Farm in Cognac, you can buy easily in most supermarkets. You got to trim it down really good. And there you got your filet. So if you want to make this recipe, the next step is kind of crucial. You want to score the trout on the back. The reason you want to score it so the meat doesn't pull together when you poach it. My favorite spectacular herb wrap goes over here. A little bit of nutmeg, just very little. A trout is a very delicate fish, so you don't want to overseason it. There are many, many recipes for a crab cake mixture. This happens to be lump crab meat with uh, sauteed peppers, any kind of peppers. Just a little bit of mayo helps as a binder and the salilan breadcrumbs to bind it all together. Please do not use panko because it would not absorb. I'm adding in some of my special herb wrap. I like a little bit of dill in mine. And we're ready to form that into the equal amount of trout fillets that you're going to be making. And then you're going to just take them and you roll it around the trout. There we go. Now the most tricky part, Dutch leeks, if you can get them. And most likely why people get scared to make this recipe, but don't be scared. You want to cut the bottom down. 
You want to try to get the biggest ball of the league. Open the leaks, throw it in the hot water. Now I got to take some of the outer ones and I'm going to cut like long strips. Throw it right in there. There you go. And now we're going to put this quick on the fire. You want to make sure that you do not over poach the leek. A couple of minutes, literally, it's all it takes. I'm almost there. See that? The leek is perfectly poached. It cools off really quickly. And you take the trout in here and you roll it. If the leek is really big, then you don't have to worry about using more than one piece, like I'm doing here. Made the green of the leek, I'm just making a little wrap around, like so, very simple, just to hold the trout together, really simple. Before I complete this recipe, let's go back to Cognac to celebrate a historic milestone for Hennessy. This is the moment I've been waiting for. What an honor to be able to experience history in the bottle. We are celebrating the 250th anniversary of Hennessy. So this is the reason why we're here, to test the Hennessy 250 collector blend. 250 years, you don't want to wash it. No, you know, <laughs> we've been waiting long enough, but I think now it's time to discover it together. Hmm. This is the actual philosophy of this blend. It's a well-structured cognac, but in the meantime, you've got this touch of energy, of elegance, a reflection of the celebration we want to have. And this is why we created this first canapé, very crisp potato chip with saffron. Mm, you've done your homework on that. <laughs> this fourth canapé, this is about having the perfect poultry. You've got a touch of our saffron cream and this nice chip on the top. It's the result of a power that is perfectly controlled. Nothing is fighting each other, it's all in harmony. It gets better by the moment. I think it's a good way to discover the Hennessy 250 Collector Blend. Very well done. All right, so the trout with the crab meat stuffing is packaged nicely. At this stage, you can do two things. You can do it on the open fire like I'm doing, or you can steam them in a bamboo steamer. I'll take a little bit of butter in the bottom of a small dutchie, as you see here. I have some shallots already chopped, put them on the bottom. I'll set in the popiette, and now I'm taking some champignon mushrooms over it. I like a little extra dill in mine. Nice dry white wine, be perfect for that, nothing too sweet. Some cream. And now comes fish stock, we call it fumé, the poisson. This fumé has an unbelievable, beautiful flavor. So this goes back on the fire. Trout is a very delicate fish. In a steamer, five to six minutes. On the fire, just a tad longer. The red bliss potato is a nice little garnish. And what you want to do, you want to look at the potato in a way that it would resemble later a mushroom. And you want to make them unorthodox. So you want to make it like the mushrooms would go in the forest. So you have different sizes, like so. Isn't this so cool? Look at that. We finish up the sauce and we are ready to eat. So the stock of the popiette, I just tied it up with Beaumarnier, which is equal flour to butter. It's absolutely spectacular. A little bit of pepper. Then it gets, in classical 18th century cooking, you're going to get a liaison. And a liaison is egg yolk and cream that goes under it. And it gives the sauce a very complex flavor. And after the liaison, it doesn't go back on the fire. The most important thing of this recipe that I was waiting for all day is the caviar. That is very priced but very delicious. This is my trip to Cognac and Chef David from Hennessy, my popiet of trout. The art of barrel making goes way back, beyond the 18th century. Without a master cooper, it'd be very complicated to age cognac. In Hennessy's cooperage, the artistry of this ancient craft has been passed down through generations. Much like cognac production, the techniques of the cooper haven't changed since their inception. The barrels produced here are made only from the finest oakwood trees felled from French forests. When split and squared, the wooden staves are stored in tiers, 
allowing them to age naturally in the elements for at least three years. Tennessee's master coopers construct these wooden containers by hand, using only metal hoops, never any bolts or screws. The barrel is toasted over an open flame. Exposure to intense heat and humidity, created from the dampened wooden staves, allows the cooper to gradually bend the barrel into shape. This expertise continues to reflect Tennessee's long tradition of savoir-faire and excellence as far back as its history goes. Visiting cognac was spectacular. And one thing I learned, Hennessy's XO and chocolate is a marriage made in heaven. So I'm making a relatively simple dessert today, a chocolate zabayon. I have some beautiful raspberries, some blueberries, and a few strawberries. Next I have a little cinnamon. I have honey from the estate. If you don't have honey, you can use sugar. Now comes the cognac, little lemon zest, little orange zest. This process we call, in technical terms, maceration. And really what it does is it just kind of gets the berries in harmony with the orange, the lemon, the cinnamon. The sabayon is basically nothing more than egg yolk, sugar. Now comes the cognac. Now I have a pot with hot water. Behind me, I'm gonna bring it over to the table. And now I'm gonna whisk this to a peak. While I have my water hot, I'm gonna get my chocolate in here to temper. It doesn't take long. So now we're gonna fold the chocolate under the sabayon. the aroma of the cognac that I've used. Oh. There's many ways of serving it. You can serve in a champagne glass, martini glass, but here, being at Charles Thompson Estate, I got an actual plate from the 18th century. So now I have my berries ready, goes right in the middle, and all I need now is a sprig of mint. Richard Hennessy, you had a great idea in 1765 to produce cognac, which is now renowned the world over. Wow. Spectacular.